Hey friends, Dr. Motley here with the Ancient Health Podcast. And in this episode, I wanted to discuss with you, can bloodshot eyes reveal a deeper health concern or a deeper health problem just from the way your eyes look? Well, in many healthcare practitioners' opinion, the answer is yes. So in Chinese medicine, in iridology, and even in Ayurvedic medicine, the eyes are the windows to the soul. The eyes reveal quite a bit of information according to many practitioners in the natural health wor world. Now, when we talk about the eyes in the area around the actual pupil and iris, we're talking about the sclera. It's called the white of the eyes. Now, the white of the eyes are meant to be a topographical map, which means it represents certain areas and structures of the body. Now, the condition of every organ of body tissue can be reflected in the areas of the sclera. Now, when we're talking about this, we're talking about nerve filaments, we're talking about muscle fibers and blood vessels, little itty bitty blood vessels that are in the sclera represent certain areas of the body. So if you go online and you look at certain body maps, you can put this in, put sclera body maps, sclera iridology charts. And if you look in that area, each area of the sclera is related to certain organ tissue. They find, since the eyes are connected to the brain, that when an impro improper imbalance basically is within an organ, then that will shoot a signal to the brain telling the brain that, hey, there is a problem here in my liver, here in my pancreas, here in my spleen. And that will cause, what, irritation within that part of the brain because the brain, because the brain is trying to do what? Always adapt. Always adapt to the situation. So essentially, when the brain is trying to adapt and send a signal back to the organ, it's trying to accommodate the problem within the organ. But at the same time, there's a resonance. There is an electrical connection. There's a neurological connection between the eye and the brain. So certain parts of the eye will be irritated or inflamed or get bothered by the problem in the organ. That's the premise. So the veins in the eyes especially the veins and the arteries, they reveal stress processes within the body. So if there's stress in the body, they reveal it. Now, when we look at the areas around the eye, you can look at a chart and see where your eyes have especially these big areas of bloodshot um, veins that have burst open. Maybe it's in the inside of the eye or the outside of the eye. Maybe it's even more whitening or a dull color. And we're going to go over that in just a second. But the discoloration within the sclera or the veins or dots or bloodshot areas like small bloodshot dark um, points or even black dark points can tell you that there is some kind of information in the body that your body is trying to reveal to you. Now, the cool thing about the sclera is that the sclera will reveal little small vital changes, subtle changes. All right. It is not there to tell you that you have a disease. We're not saying on this podcast that you can look at your eye and say you have a disease or a condition. We're saying subtle changes or imbalances within the actual organ. That allows you to investigate the organ. So if you see areas that in your eye that could correspond to, let's say, the liver or the pancreas, we're not saying you have a disease or a condition. We're saying that there could be conditions that could be underneath the surface, that the weakening within the organ could be sending signals to the brain, and the brain is trying to help, let's say the liver has some signals of blood sugar imbalance, or the pancreas does as well. And so you see an area of your eye that has the liver and the pancreas show. I'm not saying you get scared or get frightened and say, oh goodness, I have blood sugar issues and I have a problem here. I think I have diabetes. But it is a good idea to pay attention to it, and even if you don't have blood sugar imbalances within your blood work, start to work on cleansing the liver and the pancreas. We want to avert any threatening condition that could come to the surface. That's the beauty of the eye. The eye is giving you information to allow you to cut any problems off at the pass. You want to make sure you pay attention because then as the eyes clear, you know that the brain is getting cleared as well. So do the bloodshot eyes give you information? Yes, it does, in my opinion. But this is for your investigation. This is where you go today and look into the mirror and look at an iridology chart for the sclera. And you can look for the uh, pupil and the iris. And you can get indications, wow, maybe this area in this eye is connected to an organ. 
Then look at your health history. Does it correlate with what you have? Does it correlate with what your parents have? I've had individuals and patients who have had vision problems, eye problems, and when you look in their eye to investigate their eye, because I always do a fight or flight or a um, sympathetic response test by flashing light to the eye to see if the pupils contract, you can see different lines. Have you ever had that? Have you ever looked at somebody's eye and seen demarcations, little areas that have discoloration, like one part of their eye is blue, the other part's gray, and they even have yellowing? Why is it that when you go to the doctor, right, they'll say, well, your eyes, the white of your eyes look yellow. So I suspect jaundice. Now, how is it that we can take that information saying you have jaundice from the look in your eyes? Or they come and say, your eyes look really dull. Your eyes look bright. You look like you're full of life. Because the eyes are the windows of what your brain is doing. And your brain is connected to your higher mind. So, if you notice these little irritations, these little areas, when we pay attention, then I would look and say, okay, this area is correlated with your liver. And then I would check with Chinese medicine the pulse points. They call them pulse points on the wrist and the alarm points on the body to see if they were tender or imbalanced. And after we would do that, I would find out that there was an imbalance within the liver and correlate them between the eye and the body. And as you started to work with herbs and a good diet and different foods for those organs, I found out that the eyes would start to clean up. They would actually get more white. The veins would start to go away. Now, I don't think it's coincidence because many of you out there who are natural health practitioners are going to say, yes, eyes make a difference. There's others that are skeptic. I understand that. Look at it and go, there's no way that the eye is going to give you information about what's going on in the body. But in the Ayurvedic world, in alternative medicine and Chinese medicine, there is lots of correlation about how the body develops as an embryo. Remember, as an embryo, you're basically a small-looking bean. And as you open up and you unfold, remember, you are a big concentric ball of nerves. And as you spread and open up, those nerves spread apart, but they're still connected. The cell layers that I mentioned, the endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm, are all connected in one small ball. As you stretch, they elongate. But... The cell layers, they all stay connected through what? Their physiology, through their neurological connections, through their frequency, through their electrical connections. And so if something happens in one area of the body, now let's say you have a foot, could it affect something in your hand? Could it affect something in your head? Well, with reflexology, iridology, Chinese medicine, with different forms of health care, the answer is yes. So let's look into it. Let's investigate together. So when we talk about the iris, I want to write this down, that it will give you lots of information. The iris, the dark spot, your blue eyes, your brown eyes, your gray eyes, your yellow eyes, about the genetic inheritance data, your genetics, tissue conditions, inflammation patterns, um, your physical qualities. When you look at the iris, if you look at an iris, an iridology chart of the iris, it will give you an idea of some certain marks on the eye. Um, and so this can give you an idea of like what's inherited. Now, it doesn't tell you have a problem. It just tells you that there could be a predisposition genetically if you do not eat right, if you don't live in a good quality area of air, if there's lots of pollution, pesticides, if there's a lot of chemicals in your, bo in your area. Those marks in your pupil can give you an indication that if your genetics can be triggered, it could possibly lead to a change in the function of the organ or the body part that that area of the eye is related to. So let's say in my grandfather's eye, I did have an iridology chart when I was younger. I was one of those kids that loved charts, science charts. And I heard about this. So what did I do? I got a book about it. And I looked at my grandfather's eye. And my grandfather was a, a Georgia boy. And he... Um, he said, well, he, he always had nicknames for me, and uh, he's like, why don't you come over here, Jay Bird, and let's, uh, let's look at it and see what this is all about. So I looked at his eye, and for sure, there was problems um, with his eye in the area of the gallbladder. And I, at the time, I didn't follow my grandfather's surgery patterns or anything, and he goes, huh. I said, yeah, there's a little part, and it's correlated to the gallbladder. I was like, I don't even know what the gallbladder is. What is it? He says, well, he said, that's pretty funny. He goes, I just had my gallbladder removed about, about six months ago. 
And I went, really? And he goes, yeah, because I didn't pay attention because I lived far away. I lived in Kansas while he was lived in Georgia. And he had been having problems with it because, you know, with with the diet, they ate a lot of, you know, biscuits and gravy. They ate a lot of um, thick, rich foods, which was hard on the gallbladder. So he had to get it removed. Now, would it have showed up earlier? If we'd seen the part in the eye maybe two years earlier, could it have done something to his diet or to his exercise program to actually help his gallbladder to get replenished? Maybe so. But I think it's very interesting. When you look at your eyes, you always have a bloodshot eye. There are certain areas of the eye that will give you now indications, like could there be issues with blood sugar? Could there be areas that are uh, related to liver function, like methylation? Could uh, you see patterns that have to do with the thyroid in the eye? I would love to um, eventually talk to a classically trained iridologist and see what they say about this because it's so interesting to me when you can look at one part of the body and get information about the next. So I wrote down that in the traditional Chinese medicine world, the eyes are known as uh, they reflect the mind, the shen. When it says reflects the mind, it means what's going on up here? Your brain's connection to, they say, your higher mind, which is what? Your conscious, your super conscious. So, and they say that all your organs lead to the eyes, all of them. Now, there's really good points here. They say the luster is equal to the mind and the five yin organs if they're in a good state. Your yin organs are your solid organs like your spleen and your liver and your lungs. Um, these are all real solid organs. Now, that means that the luster comes from the health of these organs. The dullness, they say, is from your yin organs being out of balance. So your yin organs are the solid organs, and if they're out of balance, they say you lose your luster. They're dull. Um, one of the biggest things in Chinese medicine is emotional states. They say that the deep emotional problems of the body are connected to your brain and your higher mind, how your body thinks, how the programs are running, and how these emotional programs run, and they're definitely represented in the neurological t uh, tissue of the eyes. So the eyes can give you quite a bit of indication of stress. Have you ever talked to somebody and they've said, gracious, I'm having a bad day, and you just look at their eyes and look distraught. You look at them and they're like, man, you go, I know something's up with them just by the way they looked at me. Oh, they're about to cry. Or they may not even have watery eyes, but you know something's gone because their eyes look stressed. This is what they're talking about in Chinese medicine. So the corners of the eye usually represent the heart. So I don't have a huge map to show you, but like on the corners of the eye, we're talking about the sclera, the white part. On the inside of the eye or the outside, in Chinese medicine, that's always represented the heart. On the upper eyelid, right where the eyelid is, that's representing the spleen. The lower eyelid, where you get a sty, that represents the stomach. The sclera itself, all around the sclera, like if it's in the middle, usually represents the majority of the lungs. Now, there are intricate parts, guys, of the sclera. So if you look at a sclera chart, I am saying you can look at small pinpoint areas that relate to different organs. But in a general overall sense, I'm going to let you know that we're showing some general big areas of the eye. This is just the traditional Chinese medicine aspect. The pupil is representing the kidney, and the iris itself represents the liver. Now, when we see any discoloration, let's say within the whole area of the sclera, then I would suspect there could be lung issues. If there are areas within the corners of the eyes, the heart, especially if there's there are going to be any type of styes within the lower area, stomach and upper area, spleen. So I just want to represent to you that if you study these things, you could see, okay, I have a sty in my lower eyelid. Is it a viral? I guarantee it's probably a virus or an infection on the eyelid. There could be small parasites, which is proven by many ophthalmologists and optometrists, or it could be a bacterial infection, of course. But that neurological condition can also let you know that something could be going on with the stomach. The stomach one points right here. And with that, you could investigate the stomach, getting a gastric uh, check, maybe getting some imaging done, maybe seeing if there's a hiatal hernia, maybe seeing if there's some kind of infection like H. pylori or strep or E. coli. You see how it kind of goes. There's a lots of good indication of what you could do to help with the actual uh, body functions in relationship to the eye. So the red in the corners are the heart fire. Okay, uh, The red in the sclera means there's lung heat, which means if there's lung problems, there could be like mycoplasma or pneumonia or bacterial infection. Have you ever seen that where you could have, what, a lung infection? That's hiding. Old strep or staph in the lungs. 
The yellow in the sclera means damp heat. Yellow means what? Jaundice, liver, dampness. There's mold probably or fungus, but dampness within the liver or the gallbladder. The whole eye is red, which means that there's a high inflammatory state within the body, like pink eye, but that means if the eye is really red, there's too much overall inflammation. That person needs to get inflammatory processes down, needs to get the liver cleansed out, needs to get the gallbladder cleansed out, and especially the lymph system. So this is not for you to get scared. This is just for you to show you that's preemptive. It's not saying you're having something going on immediately right now, but remember, the sclera is telling you that there's something going on that could be prevented if you just start to nurture the body and heal the body. If you ever have dullness or in the corners of the eye, like like the area that's representing the heart heat, that means the heart's too overactive. That means the heart's beating too fast. You may have high blood pressure, pulse areas, or the area you have too much fight or flight. That's that redness in the corners of the eye. But if there's dullness, that usually means there's anemia type issues. So if there's dullness in those areas, what I do is I try to find out if there's any type of iron deficiency, any anemia, or borderline. And then I look for any type of parasite. Any type of parasite like uh, Babesia or malaria type parasites or Staph or Strep, which is a par bacterial parasitic type um, organism that would be tearing apart the red blood cells. You see, and then you investigate, and I've seen it many times correlated, where the eyes are losing their luster, and all of a sudden you get a test, and I'm like, you do have Babesia, because the eyes told us. So I just, I'm now starting to write down some notes, because I want to make sure I give everything I can on these podcasts, because I love just to be able to just talk with you and, and converse. But there's sometimes I like to write down my notes, and just to make sure that you guys get all the information you can. Um, so when we talk about small dots... Or small areas of the eye. I just wanted to represent this. Like, you can take your eye and draw a horizontal line right through it. Everything above is going to be related to the back. Everything below the horizontal line is usually from the chest. Usually they say that there are, if you ever have lines, you can d cut it into different quadrants. So what's happening on the back or the front? That's a whole other discussion we can go into. But you may see a majority of spots on the top of the eyes, which means you can have a back condition. Could there be stuff going on with the spine? Could there be going, things going on with the kidneys, which are located towards the back, or the, uh, the lungs, in the rear of the lungs? Now, green, blue, purple, or red spots. I wanted to write this down. At the end of red veins, if you have these little dots at the end of the red veins, it usually means that there's some form of lesion. Now, I'm not saying a serious condition, but it could be that there could be type of infections within the chest or the back. Lesions usually mean if there's, you know, there could be any type of uh, patterns of infectious growth, any types of cysts or angiomas. Chinese medicine sort of relates it to those kind of things if you have that, but they don't even have those. Really what they're saying is there could be some infectious patterns within the chest or the back if you have the green, blue, purple, or red spots. So I would suspect inf infections in the body if that happens. Gray and scattered spots, the grayness, gray little gray areas, usually is stagnation of energy, of qi, of the electrical components of the body. So if you have lots of gray and scattered spots, you have to get your electrical system moving forward, which would mean more fascial work, body fascia, more acupuncture or acupressure, and following herbal, herbal and nutritional evaluation by a good nutritionist or herbalist. If you do these three components, I'm telling you, you will start to see your eyes brighten up. Good nutrition, as in finding a good nutritionist, I would find somebody that is more into the natural health world of nutrition, and I'd find a good acupuncture acupressurist or do acupressure on yourself. And I would really pay attention to the herbs and use those herbs to help clean out the body. And you'll see that gray spots start to, to uh, filter away. But you'll also see the green and blue and purple spots as well because you'll clean out the infections if you do those processes. The deep black spots usually mean that there's injury to the blood. There's an infection in the blood or there's a problem with the blood, maybe with the red blood cells. So when you start to see these, you can just start to do a few simple components that will actually help clear out the eyes. But remember, it may take the work or the investigation of a good iridologist or a good Chinese medicine practitioner, or Ayurvedic practitioner, holistic healthcare practitioner that love to use the eyes to start using things to clean up the system. So the spiral-shaped red veins, when you have spiral-shaped red veins, it usually means you're in a lot of pain. So there's a pain component. Now... 
I wanted to give you this, these indications of what, be go what could be going on, but what do you do to help, rec you know, to rectify it? Again, I would recommend finding a good Chinese medicine practitioner. Find a good quality acupuncturist in your area or a practitioner that uses acupuncture or acupressure. And I would, again, follow, find a good nutritionist that could take, that could take your blood work, that could take your hormonal work, that could work with the Chinese medicine practitioner and start to work on your diet. It's clarifying. The eyes are always related to the liver. In Chinese medicine, the, that's the main organ they say the liver controls. The cleaner the liver, the cleaner the eyes because of the blood quality of the body. So if your eyes have problems constantly, usually liver. So you work on methylation. You work on cleansing the liver, doing liver detox. Start to work with milk thistle tea, dandelion tea, or alternate them. Start utilizing Shisandra berry. Shisandra Supreme from Supreme Nutrition Products is a great product. But start off slowly. Do one every other day because it's a good antioxidant. And if your body responds well and your vision starts to feel better, then do one every day. Every day. That's just a suggestion, a thought. I love Shisandra Berry. For the eyes in Chinese medicine, I love Chrysanthemum. Vital Guard Supreme from Supreme Nutrition is a great uh, supplement. It helps with the kidneys and the liver. It's great for the eyes. I like Bilberry. Uh, I use a supplement called Smart Eyes by Epigenetics International, Smart Eyes, and it has bilberry and zeaxanthin, has astaxanthin, has resveratrol. Um, it has all the components of all the things that your eyes need to help grow and get stronger. Smart Eyes. Do you take all of these? I always find the one that resonates with you and start gently and slowly. When you're talking about healing the eyes, it may take you a good four to six months to see differences. So do I take Shisandra every day? No, I take Shisandra every other day. I take Smart Eyes every day. Vital Guard is one of those that you could take pretty much every day. But remember, that's why you start to get these ideas of what herbs to help your eyes clear up and help the liver as well. So dietary chains, herbs, good acupressure, acupuncture, good fascial body work are all big components to even help the eyes. Now, I wanted to cover all grounds, but I wanted you guys to know that you want to clarify the liver. You can also remember that you want to use good foods that will help the liver. And when the, one of the things I really find that the liver really resonates with is good green juices without lots of sugar. Now, don't do this if you have a lot of grass allergens, but if you find good greens like Wild Green Supreme or you find a good green product that can actually clarify and give you a lots of good what nutrients. I also think chlorophyll is a good uh, substance to help get rid of metals. Um, you can use not only chlorophyll, um, but you can use seaweed or um, sea vegetables, and you can use different types of green juices that you may find at like a good holistic market. But you want the green color juices or the green colored vegetables and the phytonutrients to get into the liver. Now what I find is sometimes people with liver issues have really hard times breaking down cellulose, which is plant material. So getting a juice source is probably one of the better ways to do it to clear out the liver. But as you clear out the liver with these juices, you'll start to see that the eyes start to get a bit more mended. Other practices too, so the green juices, the green powder like Wild Green Supreme, the herbs I just mentioned, but also, too, rubbing the eyes daily. I talked about this, but you want to go and go around a circular motion and rub around the eyes. You have points for the bladder, adrenal, triple warmer, and thyroid right here, gallbladder, and stomach, all in around the eyes. And you rub these points for about a minute, two to three times a day. While you're at work, in front of the computer, you want to rub those points out, and this will supply more electricity and more blood flow to the eyes to improve your eyesight and help stimulate those organs. The area that's most tender pay attention to. It could give you an indication of which organ could be a problem. Guys, I hope this was a good uh, podcast for you. Pay attention to your eyes. They give you a lot of information. I hope you're doing well. This is Dr. Molly. We give you our best from the Ancient Health Podcast. We'll talk soon. See you guys.